in the tournament for a record sixth time. So we'll be waiting to see how that pans out. Today, I am not alone. Cedric Musumba, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm great, fine, Robinson. Yes. yes. And I'm quite much happier than how you would think when you mention about uh, Kylian Mbappe, uh, Hurricane, yes. and Cristiano Ronaldo trying to share the same ground. Remember, mm -hmm. some of them actually used to usher in or maybe admire others who were playing, like Mbappe yes. was actually uh, admiring Cristiano Ronaldo. But this is now another avenue to showcase and see who will remain as the god of a European uh, soccer extravaganza. Yes, I want us to get into the groups. And today our focus is on Group B. Group B has the big hitters, the big teams, when you talk about uh, European football. Spain, to be specific, the one uh, the tournament uh, three times. You have Croatia, you have Albania, and of course, the defending champions, Italy. Cedric, before we break this down, I mean, what are your thoughts on this group? Is it the group of death? It is. It is the mere fact that anyone who will sleep against Albania will actually be uh, weeping their tears at the end, mm -hmm. especially given to the essence that they're among the three of a bigger power, European powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Each and every team need actually to play as if it's a final before final. And if you remember Albania also the qualification paths towards this uh, uh, UEFA championship yes. has not been quite uh, uh, that easy and it has made it even harden up. Now going to move if you realize that they went, they put three, uh, three goals past the likes of Croatia, they went ahead to beat the likes of Bul Bulgaria. It's a kind of a team that is coming here also to set a statement and it will be upon Italy, Spain and Croatia to earmark their space and stature as one of the powerhouse. In Italy Europe. are coming into this tournament as the defending champions, Cedric. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of pressure on them to perform. The worst bit of it is that they are presenting a different, totally different squad from the squad that actually won this particular trophy when they graced the last, uh, the, yes. the last time. And this time round in Italy, actually, they have come up with an essence of trying to rebuild a team that will make Italy that we know. I think coming to this particular game also, they are bringing in a different kind of a style. Remember, there's Palat, Palat saying that our traditional way of defending and trying to win the ball from defense and build up trying to latch on to the offensive line to find goals is not the same way that we're going to be playing. We will be employing, as in trying to employ, different formation in a game, like two, three formation before the game end. And that's what the, game, the kind of style that Italy will be presenting coming to this particular uh, nation competition. Yes, so let's get into the pick of it. We take a look at the groups, uh, the, rather the teams, uh, the squads, brother, that have been named uh, for the different teams. So we speak, we begin with Spain, uh, Cedric, and uh, this is the team everybody will be looking at. A very young, uh, you, they have a favorably very young squad. So let's take a look at their profile. I quickly ran uh, throughout, uh, rather quickly ran uh, through the Spain profile. The manager is uh, Luis de Fante de la Fuente, uh, Alvaro Morata. The qualifying record, they played 8 1 7, drew. They didn't draw, uh, rather draw any, they lost one. And then, of course, uh, Euro 2020, they were semi finalists. Remember, they lost to Italy. Their most cap person in the squad is Alvaro Morata. 73 caps, and the top scorer in the squad is also Alvaro Morata with uh, 35 caps. Now, let's take a look at the defenders, uh, rather, the goalkeepers. David Breyer, the Arsenal goalkeeper, Alejandro Ramiro, and Unai Simon. Quickly, uh, briefly, Cedric, how, how do you make of this? Uh, uh, goalkeeping squad of uh, I think Spain. Unai still commands the space, yes. even to the essence that he has been there and the expect that he's actually bringing it to this kind of competition. Mm -hmm. uh, Raya will be there actually maybe to wait and see how Unai will be firing on before he can as well come in. Maybe mm -hmm. if Spain happens to win through the far, their first uh, two matches, the yes. last match maybe can be Raya to grace it just to enjoy the tournament. Uh, by himself. Yes, uh, in uh, defense, uh, this time, for the very first time, we're having a totally different, uh, rather the different uh, defense for Spain in a very long time. Aside from Danny Cavajal, who has dressed uh, different tournaments uh, with this uh, Spanish uh, side, you have Marco Curella, Alejandro Grimaldo, Emrek Laporte, Robin Del uh, Le Normand, Nacho, and Daniel Vivian. Briefly, 
For the first time, actually, we are missing out Paul Torres, mm -hmm. and I think uh, Alejandro Grimaldo will be there actually to grace. And remember, Spain has never had a solid defense. Yes. At some point, Rodri and Laporte were actually dressing at that centre back. Mm -hmm. This time round, we are seeing Nacho actually playing uh, alongside Grimaldo and that particular centre back. It's a team that tells enjoy possessing ball and they draw back to support the defense. They literally mm -hmm. doesn't care about the defense simply because the ball they win the ball so much as in so much given time yes. in a special play than any other team that they are playing against. In the midfield, we have the midfield general Rodri. He will be expected, of course, to uh, cushion the defense. But you have the likes of Alex Baena, Mikel Marino, Mikel Oizabal, Pedri, Fabian Ruiz, Nico Williams, and Martinez Zubimendi. Very, very stuck to me. It is a space actually for Rodri to enjoy. Yes. Here, I think Rodri need to enjoy here better than how he enjoys at the Man City. Mm -hmm. Given to the Esna, this particular time round, yes. he will be actually allowed to play mm -hmm. his rightful role. The likes of uh, Pedri will be car ball carrier in that particular midfield, trying yes. to get the ball from, from from the defense and transit through the midfield and supply them up front. Alvaro Morata will be actually depending on how the likes of uh, uh, Pedri will be getting those ball from the defense and supplying up front to try to find that particular ball. But if you go by the Pedri now here mm -hmm. is where the defense line of uh, Spain will be depending on he at any given time be falling back to defend to create that four line or five line of defensive um, wall yes. to any other given team that Spain will be facing. And in attack, I know you are not a big fan of uh, Alvaro Morata, but he is the one expected to lead uh, that uh, attack alongside the likes of uh, Laminia Mal, Dani Omar, Jose Perez, Ferran Torres, and uh, Femin Lopez as well as uh, Jose Lu. This time round actually will be so disappointing for him because they're about also to retire. Mm -hmm. I think this might be one of their final uh, matches uh, for him to grace for Spain. Yes. But he enjoys wing, uh, wingers who are actually very fast and ball carriers and quite dangerous when they find space uh, yes. around the goal. These are the likes of, uh, I mentioned Lamin Liamal, if mm -hmm. he will be playing at the right. And then he also have the likes of Nico Williams if he will be playing from the left. Morata enjoying the space at the middle, he will be actually be getting so many supplies. And remember, Spain heading to this uh, championship mm -hmm. is a team that has been registered so many balls coming from crosses to the danger area mm -hmm. it, uh, as in the uh, targeting Morata targeting Morata cre yes. cre credited to these young uh, spe speedy young wingers who are actually able to carry ball from the midfield and try to give him the ball of one the only thing that Morata need to actually to uh, earmark to is to become so clinical in front of goal. As we have seen him being getting all those supply, but he doesn't really kill them. Let's uh, move the to the Crow Arts. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, team is also one of the teams that we watch, but they are in the group of uh, death. Will Modric, the likes of uh, Perisic, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Vadiol carry this uh, team uh, through. So let's take a look at uh, the profile of uh, the Croats and uh, the manager is Latko Dalic, captain Luka Modric, qualifying record. They played 8-1-5, drew 1. In 2020, that is the Euro of 2020, they were knocked out in the round of 16. The most cup player in the squad is Luka Modric 175 times and the top scorer in the squad is Ivan Perisic with 33 goals. Now, in a in goalkeeping department for uh, Croatia, definitely Dominic Livakovic is the man expected to start. Now, let's go to defense. This is where, uh, Cedric, I want uh, you to give us your input briefly. Martin Alic, Josko Gvadiol, Josip Juranovic, Marina Pongracic, Bonasosa, Josip Stancic, Josip Sutalo, and Domagog Vida. Who do you expect to start from this uh, Sutalo, list? Actually, Sutalo will be controlling the centre back. We mm -hmm. have seen what he has done, like uh, at their games against Portugal. Mm -hmm. The likes of Josip, Josip Stanisic will be actually trading at the, low, at the, at the wing back. Mm -hmm. And if that makes that Bonasosa maybe will start by warming the, the bench, yes. the likes of Juranovic also might start from the bench because it's the same same line that they trade. They, they happen to say. Just for Guardiola for, for the first Francis. time, for the first time in Croatian uh, jersey. jersey He's actually dropping to the wing back. Credit to uh, Pep Guardiola. Because this is a kind of a player who has actually been at the centre back mm -hmm. of Croatia. In the World Cup, we saw him at the age of 20 yes. trying to prevent any other danger that will come actually attacking Croatia from the centre. And he did very well. This same round, we want to see how he will fire on from the, from the wing. But remember, this defence of Croatia does not actually stop by getting, stop from playing without getting the defensive line of the likes of the experienced player that will be playing just in front of now them. Now that you're speaking of um, people that are just in front of them, can we see, take a look at the midfielders, that is where we have the midfield general himself, uh, 
that is Luka Modric. He uh, will be alongside the likes of uh, Mateo Kovacic, Mario Pasalic, Luka Sucic, Nikola Vlasic, uh, Marcelo Brozovic, and uh, Martin Baturina. There's no question about who will start at that particular midfield if you go by how Croatia has been trading all along. Mm -hmm. Age aside, yes. but experience and the technical, technical ability that they are bringing into this particular tournament is yes. required the most. And also, the experience that actually makes them settle down. They are good in ball carrying, mm -hmm. they are good in defence if it comes, and, they don't, and they don't panic. And it's a kind of a team, by the way, you have mentioned something, that even if you hit them two goals, they just settle down and they will wait until the die wins of the game actually to bring the game back to themselves. Like the likes of uh, uh, Kovacic, it's a kind of a player who like holding. Mm -hmm. The same style Luka Modric play. It's only Brozovic actually who like carrying the ball or something. But you see him settling down because he's playing around the bouquet of and two experienced players who knows how to control the match. That midfield is where you need to break Croatia from. And I don't know how you'll break them if playing alongside such experienced and well-capable player, the likes of Modric, Kovacic and uh, Marcelo Brozovic. And of course, in attack, you have uh, Ante Budmer, Luka, Ivanov Sech, Andre Kramaric, Marko Pasalic, Ivan Perisic, who's the top scorer for Croatia, Bruno Petkovic and Marko Jaka. I want us to move into the other team, that is the defending champions, Italy. Yes. This is the team to watch out for. Reason being, they're the defending champions. Last Euro, nobody gave them a chance. They went on to win. Now, Cedric, they are in this tournament. They want to retain it. Let me quickly uh, take you through the profile of uh, the Italian side. And the manager is Luciano Spalletti. The captain is uh, Gianluigi Donnarumma. They, is, uh, rather they won. Uh, they played eight matches, won four, drew two, lost two in the qualifying round. In Euro 2020, they were the winners. The most cup player in the squad is uh, Donnarumma with 62 appearances. The top scorer is uh, Nico Barella. Now, let's take a look at uh, the goalkeeping uh, section. Donnarumma definitely is going to start uh, for the Azuri. But now when you move to defense, this is also where they are stacked. I mean, they have quality. Alessandro Bastoni, Raul Bellanova, Alessandro Bogginio, Ricardo Calafiori, Andrea Cambiaso, Matteo Damien, Giovanni Di Lorenzo, Federico Di Marco, Federico Gatti, and Gianluca Mancini. Briefly, Cedric, very briefly, what center, are you expecting from here? Center back, I think Mancini will have to pair up with Bastoni. We have seen it actually in the build-up doing very well, mm -hmm. and they have been there for a while, and also they are uh, bring, trying to bring experience given that they were in the last time. But now they're going into this Euro century without the center back pairing that we had in the previous Euro. Leonardo Bonucci, I know the command of experience yes. and also that leadership yes. is what this team actually will be lacking. Remember, it's now a team that has really been oiled by an average time to, uh, kind of age, age, age group. Mm -hmm. And also the experience of how you play alongside players that have really commanded so many cups in a team. And you have mentioned about Chilini and Bonucci, yes. guys who will celebrate when they win a tackle. That this time round, no one will be celebrating when they win a tackle. They need to play as a unit, they need to play as a team, and they need to move forward and really, really try to uh, earmark the space of their predecessors. Us. And if you go by the back line, still the experience is there. Yes. Di Lorenzo is still playing here, and baby, we remember how what he did in the last Euro. Mm -hmm. with the record of the De Marco is still there. They play. I yes. think they should have borrowed something from the two pair of uh, Bonucci and Mancini in that particular defense that will be transit to this one. Yes, in midfield, there is one man that you'll be looking out for, Nico Barella. This is a one that you cannot miss because he's guaranteed to start for that uh, side. You have uh, Brad Cristante, Nicolo Fagioli, Davide Fratesi, Gioguinho, and Lorenzo Pellegrini. Cedric, this goes without uh, speaking. Um, I mean, it's a very, very experienced midfield. You know, the first time going through books, and I'm so actually not quite certain to the essence that I have seen Barella and him actually popping up. Uh, severally mm -hmm. compared to the likes of Cristante and Jogino. Yes. Give it the mere fact that Jogino and Cristante has been the pair for that midfield for a very long time yes. of period. But Barella, uh, ability and technability of carrying... Who's the top scorer in the qualifiers? Uh, yes, in the, in the Euro qualifiers for 2024. Nicola... With Barella, with nine goals. Yes, exactly. Yes. And you see the ability that he's bringing in, mm -hmm. quite comparable to the two that I've mentioned, Cristante and uh, Jogino, mm -hmm. is that he's actually literally young, compared to the two, and he can transit the ball from the defence uh, to the striking force. And also his movement actually gives a uh, competitive edge the likes of Di, Lore Di Lorenzo mm -hmm. and the likes of Di Marco to attack. Because sometimes when Di Lorenzo and Di Marco are going forward to attack, mm -hmm. he falls back to the defence to feel the to fill in that defensive line, those gaps that they are leaving that behind. That's the only uh, uh, important weapon that uh, uh, Spalletti 
will be, rely, will be relying on going to this particular Federico Kiesa, Stefan El Sharawi, Michael Folorucho, uh, Giancomo Raspadori, Matteo Retegui, Gian, uh, Gianluca uh, Skamaka and Matias Akadni uh, form the attacking uh, pairs for uh, the Azuri going into the tournament. Now, Albania, yes, Cedric, everybody sees them as the weak link, but they are here to upset people. So, let me take a look, let, let me take you quickly through the profile of Albania. The coach is, uh, before we go to the goalkeepers, let's first take a look at the profile for this team. The coach is uh, Silvino and they have, uh, the captain is uh, Berat Jimsti, the qualifying record, they played 8-1-4-3 Three lost one. They did not qualify in 2020. The most captain, uh, rather cap player in the squad is Ese De Heiser, and the top scorer in the squad is Riyad Manaj. Now, when you take a look at uh, this uh, Albanian side, Cedric, everybody thinks that they are going into this tournament to give away points, but that will not be the case. Yeah, you see, literally somebody will see them as the dark horses of mm -hmm. the tournament. But and I tell you, they have already done some upset before they qualify here. It's a team that went past Poland. It's a team that went past uh, uh, Czech Republic, if you remember. Yes. It's a team that has hammered the likes of uh, 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 Romania. It's a team that is literally telling you uh, a story that you not need to be required to do some kind of research to get the answers. Mm -hmm. And they have their killer players, the likes of Ramadan, the likes of Alsa, uh, Al Alsani. Those are the kind of the player that has really been carrying results in this particular team. And you hear them playing so deep, trying to protect any other team that they do face. They play as an defensive, but they have some diagonal dangerous ball that falls behind the opponent's defense. Those are the balls, that, and they are so speed if it comes to attacking. So diagonal, when they fail the fight, they have the defend with their speed. It gives them an, a competitive advantage in any given team that they are going to face. Yes, sir. so, Cedric, that is all about Group B. So, Dennis, can we take a look at uh, Group B once more? I want Cedric to give us his uh, prediction on who's going through in Group B and who's going home who's just participating group b four teams spain croatia italy albania who's going through from this group i bet if all goes well with these teams mm -hmm. the three of this team gonna qualify the yes. third one will qualify on the best loser kind of cup yes but albania is out to crash albania is out to crash i remember croatia spain italy and albania in group b thank you very much for your insights on the group of